Uh, in this lecture, we'll understand more about directed testing versus random testing. So we'll understand what is directed and what is random testing, and we'll do a comparison between both approaches. So what is directed testing? Directed testing is a, an approach where we created a test that is directed at a feature or every feature in the design. Uh, if there are multiple features that has to operate in the different conditions, we might also create like a targeted test for each of those uh, feature to be working in different conditions. Uh, on the other hand, random testing is an approach where we don't create a test for every single feature. Rather, we depend on a random test or a test generator that can create multiple scenarios in a random uh, manner. Now, both directed test and random test has its own benefits and disadvantages. Uh, we'll see some of that in the following slide. Uh, but in general, directed testing works well, especially when the design is in the early stages of development, uh, when the design is still not matured, and also when the design scope is limited, where we can think through all the scenarios or all the features of the design. Whereas on the other side, random testing will be more uh, beneficial if the design complexity is uh, high and the design is also also when the design is matured in the later stages of the design development uh, when each features might work so in that case also random testing might be useful so let's do a comparison between directed versus random testing so directed testing can only cover scenarios that are thought to planning so during the verification planning stage whatever scenarios or, or features that we can uh, think through has to be tested uh, those works well for directed uh, we can only test those features it comes with high maintenance cost because uh, for every feature we have to create a single test and based on the number of features the number of tests might be huge and these tests will have to be maintained throughout the project or across projects etc and as i mentioned this works good when the condition space is finite that's when we can uh, exactly plan for all the scenarios if the design space is huge then uh, there, it's not possible for thinking through all the scenarios in a given project time frame uh, the other good thing is you don't need an extensive coverage coding since we know exactly what the test is covering uh, it's guaranteed that test will be hitting that scenario so there's no other effort needed to make sure whether the scenarios are hit on the other hand uh, pure random needs infinite compute cycles to cover all condition space so as i mentioned in the pure random testing approach we depend on a random test generator that can randomly hit all the scenarios so we need to run for infinite number of seats if we want to make sure all the condition space is covered uh, in a pure random approach, there will be less user to control. Uh, we depend on a uh, generator to randomly create all the scenarios. So that's why uh, between directed and pure random, we follow an approach called constrained random, where we don't uh, we don't let the uh, let the uh, generator to be like purely random. Uh, but we kind of constrain the randomness in the test of the generator to interesting scenarios in the design this approach definitely has a high ramp up time since we have to understand the exact design scenario we'll have to code intelligent random test generators uh, etc and we also need to uh, follow some kind of a coverage metrics to measure how good the constrained randomness is and also to measure the completeness uh, this approach will give you deep user control uh, through building complex test generators. Test generators can be built with like a lot of user control. In that way, you can hit all the different uh, state space in the design. Uh, it's considered as the best balance between engineer time and compute time. In the sense, you don't have to be running too many seats and depend on the pure randomness to get everything. Be constrained. A lot of randomness is that uh, a lot of scenarios can be hit much faster uh, we can have static and dynamic randomness what you mean is like we can either create all the random test up front or it's also possible to build intelligence in the generator where we can dynamically vary the randomness to hit more and more interesting scenarios so that's a comparison between the three approach and of uh, three the constrained random seems to be the best balance 
especially for complex designs where we will not be able to create a direct test test for every scenario to be verified and we cannot be depending on a pure random generator to hit everything out of luck so this diagram again explains uh, two diagram it explains uh, directed versus random testing average effort uh, this first diagram uh, it shows like the percentage of functional coverage hit uh, versus time taken so in a directed test uh, testing approach uh, with every test case development we kind of hit a certain percentage of the functional coverage so it's like a step improvement uh, throughout the project and it takes like say so much time to hit like all the hundred percent coverage to be hit or the hundred percent scenario to be tested whereas in a coverage driven or a constrained random approach uh, initially there has to be a lot of effort put to put to build the test generator uh, during which we may not be able to really test anything so that's why it has a, an initial ramp up time but once the initial uh, test generator is up we can kind of get a quick jump in the coverage and then we might see like uh, we are again not getting several scenarios so we can go and tune the generator and we will again get a big jump so that's the approach used in constrained random or a coverage driven verification approach and we can hit a hundred percent coverage much easier than uh, the directed approach so the second uh, graph also shows a comparison between the engineer time spent versus compute cycle time spent in all the three approaches. So as you can see in the directed test, uh, we initially uh, initially start building directed tests for every scenario, and as time as time grows, we build a bigger test suite, and that's when we spend a lot of time in the compute cycles. In a completely random, a lot of engineer time is spent initially in coding coverage and building the randomness. And then we kind of run through a lot of billions of cycles. Whereas a directed random approach is a balance between both where initially we spend a lot of time to actually come up with all the constrained randomness and then uh, coverage, etc. And then uh, we kind of use effectively the compute cycles to get the better coverage. So let's see now what is coverage and how coverage is used in verification so coverage is defined as a metric for completeness of verification uh, why do we do coverage so as, as explained in a constrained random verification which is what is most commonly used for complex designs we don't uh, do an extensive verification of the complete space we do a verification based on samples Suppose say there are like uh, n states, then you cannot run like all the two power n combinations to cover the entire verification phase. So we follow a constrained random approach where we create like test uh, tests which are like constrained around interesting scenarios. So we need to know an exact, we need to know by some means as to what are the areas of design that have been verified. And that's when the functional coverage and code coverage, which are the two types of coverage, will help us uh, identify like what areas of design are being verified well. So let's start uh, to understand like what is code coverage first. So code coverage comes with like different flavors. It kind of uh, gives a metrics or an analysis of how good the code is being uh, covered during simulation. So the first is statement coverage. The statement coverage is a straightforward matrix which tells you how much of the statements in the source code is executed during your different tests. The branch coverage is another uh, similar one which, uh, which tells you uh, whether every control structure has been evaluated to both true and false conditions which are your branch conditions. Example is like the if, if statements or case statements or while statements then whether all those different branching conditions are covered by your tests or not so this matrix will give you a measurement of that condition coverage is uh, in a coverage form which uh, gives you uh, gives you coverage about whether every boolean sub expressions are evaluated to true or false uh, we can also do expression coverages especially in expressions uh, this gives a coverage on the RHS or the right hand side of the assignment. For example, in this example, x is equal to a, x or not of b. Uh, coverage will give you whether all combinations of 
the XR and not are being covered. Toggle coverage gives the uh, toggle uh, report on whether all logic nodes are transitioned. There are two forms of toggle coverage. The standard toggle coverage gives you a coverage on whether uh, every node is kind of getting toggled between 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. Yeah, whereas in extended coverage, it kind of gives you more detailed report on whether it's being toggled between all the four states. FSM coverage gives you a coverage on the different state transitions and the different arc coverages. Now on the functional coverage, the functional coverage is slightly different than code coverage. The functional coverage covers the functionality of the design. It's derived from a design specification. The tools cannot generate an automatic functional coverage unlike code coverage. In this case, based on the design specifications, uh, we need to kind of create like functional coverage monitors which the which the tool uh, uses to extract functional coverage during a simulation some examples are whether all your duty inputs are operation are correctly injected whether all the possible responses are seen on every output port you can also do internal coverage like whether all the interesting design events like five for folds arbitration mechanisms etc are being covered so that's what is at a high level what is functional coverage and we will use both code coverage and functional coverage especially in a constrained random or coverage driven verification to measure the quality of verification. So with that I have just one more diagram which shows the process especially when we are doing a coverage driven verification. So what we do is like from a verification plan we initially create a set of coverage metrics and then we uh, coverage this coverage metrics will tell you like what exactly design scenarios has to be covered this will go along with a test plan then we kind of create like generate uh, random test uh, either random tests or testing test generators we run those tests and collect the coverage report uh, we then see whether those coverage meets the goal or not if so then that determines like your verification is complete or you get like confidence on your verification if not, then you identify what all the coverages are not hit. And then in order to hit those coverage, we go and create like new tests or we enhance our gen test generators to uh, hit all those scenarios. And in this whole process, we can also enhance the coverage metrics based on what we find. And this process will continue until, until we get a confidence on the complete verification flow. So that's what in a high level what is coverage and how coverage is approached used in a coverage driven verification method.